Hello, calculus people. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Um, today we start the day of days, separation of variables with differential equations. Uh, I went to a few trainings over the summer, and one of the ladies told me there, um, who was heading up the training, said that when it comes to differential equations, she said, make sure your students know how to separate variables. Okay, so that's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn to separate variables. It's an easy concept. It means get all of one variable on one side of the equation, get the other variable on the other side. So a differential equation, you've already seen this, uh, is taking a derivative, um, usually with respect to x or with respect to y. It doesn't really matter which one, but they can involve x, y, or x and y together. Uh, it says the above are examples of differential equations re relating the rate of change dy dx to both xy or both. They are also known as variable separable. Variable separable. Now what this means for me is that I can actually take and separate these two variables and get them onto their own respective sides of an equation. Now, there is something very important that you do have to note here, and that's in the box right here. You can only separate variables by multiplication or division. And you'll kind of see what we mean as, as we go through here. We can only separate variables by multiplication or division. All right? It's the only way that I can do separation of variables, multiplying or dividing. And if it involves adding or subtracting, it's a no-go, no S. All right? So let's try number example number one here. Zoom in a little bit. It says if dy dx equals negative x over y and f of 2 equals negative 3, this is my initial condition, find f of x. So they're looking for my answer to be f of x equals something, right? They are looking for f of x equals something. <clears throat> So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this function, and I'm going to get everything that involves y over here, and I'm going to get everything that involves x over here. Now in this one, it's as simple as multiplying y to both sides to cancel it over here, move it over here, and multiplying dx to this other side, I end up with y dy equals a negative x dx. And the only thing standing in my way of finding out what f of x is, because you know f of x and y, at least in this case, could be interchangeable. What this really should have said is find y, but I'll let that go for right now. Um, the only thing that's stopping us is the dy and the dx, the derivative of y and the derivative of x. So let's get rid of them. Integrate both sides, and I've got the integral of y dy, integral of negative x dx. I can just integrate that like normal. That's going to give me y squared over 2 is equal to negative x squared over 2 plus c. And I have to plus c because it's an indefinite integral. So I've got my equation set up. The only problem is I've got this nasty c in here. So I'm going to use my initial condition plug a 2 in for x and a negative 3 in for y. Squared over 2 equals a negative 2 squared over 2 plus c. So this is going to be 9 over 2 is equal to negative 4 over 2. That negative is still there because it's not inside of the x itself. And plus c. So add 4 halves to this side, and you get 13 halves. So my equation then, I'm going to go back to up here. y squared over 2 equals negative x squared over 2 plus 13 over 2. Right? Take in, plug in your, your initial condition, or your uh, value for c. 
Um, now I need to find out what y is itself, so multiply everything by 2. You get y squared is negative x squared plus 13. And then square root y, you get plus minus square root of negative x squared plus 13. Okay, now there is a, there's a catch on this one. Since I have my initial condition, I've got to put it in here and find out where this thing goes. And if you'll remember what a square root looks like, the point 2 comma negative 3 is only on the negative side of that. In other words, plug in a 2 in here, right? Um, you get 4, negative 4, 13, which is in square root of 9. So the negative 3, if you plug the 2 in here, the negative is only going to come from the negative side. So right, make a little note. The point 2 comma negative 3 is only on the negative square root. So y is going to be the negative square root of 13 minus x squared. You always have to go back to check your initial condition. You always have to, <coughs> excuse me, and go back and when you check it, make sure that it fits with your equation. See, if I use the positive side of this, that negative 3 is not on there. All right. So, let's do some more here. Um, if ds dt equals the square root of st, t equals 0 when s equals 1, find s when t is 9. Now, this one's different because they're wanting me to find s. s equals something. And they're giving me the value for t. So they're going to actually want a numeric figure here. Where up here, they wanted the function. Down here, they want the numeric value of it. So I don't like the way this is written at all because I'm going to have to separate s and t. So I'm going to say ds dt is s to the 1 half and t to the 1 half. Remember, I can uh, separate that square root by calling it the square root of s square root of t which is s to the 1 half, t to the 1 half. And now I can separate variables. If you were to divide by s to the 1 half, over here you'd have 1 over s to the 1 half, ds, multiply dt over here, that's t to the 1 half, dt. But that 1 over s to the 1 half, ugh, it's messy. I don't like it. I want it to be a whole number, or at least a whole value. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with fractions. You know what? I got time for that. So I'm going to call this s to the negative 1 half. ds equals t to the 1 half dt. That way I don't have to worry with fractions. And now I can integrate. I've separated my variables. I've separated my ds and my dt. Now I can integrate. The integral of s to the negative 1 half is going to be s to the positive 1 half over 1 half, which is 2. So 2s to the 1 half equals t to the 3 halves over 3 halves, or 2t to the 3 halves over 3, plus c. Now, why do I not plus c on the left? Well, because if I do, I can just subtract it over here and... I don't have to worry about it. It's still just plus C. Whatever C is, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care about plus C. I ain't got time for plus C on the left. As long as I add a constant somewhere in the equation, then calculus still happened. That's all that matters. Ain't no need for calculus to get sassy with us just yet. No, no. Plug in the original. S is 1, T is 0, so 2 times 1 to the 1 half equals 2 thirds, 0 to the 3 halves, plus C, <coughs> excuse me. Square root of 1 is 1, so C is 2. This is all 0. So back up here, I've got, you know, right, or excuse me, my integral. Back to here, we have 2s to the 1 half, 2 thirds t to the 3 halves, plus 2. 
but they want us to figure out when t is 9, what is s? So, easy enough. Uh, divide by 2 everywhere, you get s to the 1 half. And this 2 will go away, this 2 will go away. Divide by 2, divide by 2. You get t is 9, so 9 to the 3 halves plus 1. 9 to the 3 halves over 3. I forgot that over 3 right there. I can't believe I forgot the over 3. Uh, square root of 9 is 2, right? Square, <laughs> I'm going to quit. Square root of 9 is 3, so the third power is 27. Over 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So I'm stuck at squaring these, s is 100. Separated my variables, good stuff. Separated my variables, integrated both sides, plugged in the initial, plugged in my new restrictions from up here, figured out what s is. Relatively straightforward. Relatively. And it wouldn't be calculus if we didn't have trig. So last one, example three. dy over y squared, we've got uh, excuse me, dy over dx equals y squared sine x. Now I can divide y squared to the other side, so I'm going to do just that. All right, and it's asking me the general solution. General solution means it's going to have a plus c to this guy is what? So let's figure it out. Uh, first, get this one over here. We have dy uh, 1 over y squared equals sine x dx, cool. So this is y to the negative 2, just like we did on the other question. dy equals sine x dx. And let's integrate that puppy. So the integral of y squared is y to the negative 1 over negative 1. Right? Integral of sine is negative cosine x, and we'll always add our plus c on the right. And I need to solve for y, so this is uh, 1 over negative y. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Negative cosine x plus c, right? So going on from here... Um, you're going to end up multiplying y over here and dividing by this. So what it's going to end up being, when you multiply this side by your negative y, you'll have negative y times negative cosine x plus c equals 1. And then divide this guy over there. So it's going to be, you know what? Why would I do that? Let me just do the y. And I'll leave this thing negative over here. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'll leave that a negative 1. So that'll give me negative 1 over negative cosine x plus c. And the only part that might trip some people up is separating out this fraction right here. Because the, the c bit really doesn't matter. The fact that it's C is completely irrelevant. So I can actually split off that plus C. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can actually split off plus C and call this negative 1 over negative cosine X plus C. Because C is irrelevant. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where C goes. The fact that it's in the denominator there is completely irrelevant. Split it up. Who cares? So this is 1 over cosine x plus c. And that is d. yippee ki -yay. And again, the reason why I can take that c out of the denominator is because it doesn't matter what plus c is. c could be anything. c is, is something I am going, to, is, am going to find later. It doesn't matter where c goes, what c is doing. It does not 
matter. C is irrelevant. See ya.